More birds have been found dead near tar sands tailing ponds. There's a third outbreak of TB in Nunavut two years after federal funding to eradicate it dried up. Southwestern Ontario judge slams the Norfolk OPP for violent and racist arrest of a 21-year-old man. The UN estimates 200,000 people have been forced to flee amid violence in Sudan. Flooding in Somalia has displaced more than 200,000 people. And the Shakahola Forest Massacre has reached 201 victims. Good morning. It's Wednesday, May 17th. I'm Nora, and here are your headlines. It's a bad news week out there for the birds. Between May 8th and May 13th, at least 32 dead birds were found at two different tailings ponds that are operated by Suncor. 27 were found at the Sincrude Mildred Lake Settling Basin, and five birds were found at the Millennium Mine Tailings Pond near their base plant north of Fort McMurray. Among the dead birds were 12 greaves, a kind of waterfowl that is threatened in Canada due to a variety of environmental factors, including fishing nets, extreme weather events, and conditions created in lakes by introduced trout. Dozens more birds were found dead in April near a tar sand site, reports the Canadian press. Then, Suncor reported 43 dead birds, two dead muskrats, one bat, and one vole. Bird deaths are not uncommon, as you might imagine would be the case in a world where toxic sludge is left out in the open for animals to discover. In 2019, Sincrude was fined more than $27 million after 31 great blue herons were found dead at one of their tar sand sites. In 2010, Sincrude was fined $3 million after more than 1,600 ducks died when they landed on a tailings pond in 2008. Next, to Nunavut's Kivalik region, where the community of Nuadjat is in outbreak with tuberculosis. It's one of three communities in Nunavut with a TB outbreak. The other two communities are Pond Inlet and Pangnertung. Pangnertung has had a TB outbreak since November 2021. Nuadjat is a community of 1,000 people, and it has about six active cases and 10 latent cases, reports an unbylined article at CBC News. As I've mentioned before on this podcast, the Liberals promised to eradicate TB in Inuit communities by 2030. The project was announced in 2018, and two years later, the money for the project stopped. By then, the rates of TB had barely changed. The article doesn't seek comment from Mark Miller, Patty Hadju, or Justin Trudeau. And from the department of This Will Surprise Absolutely Nobody, Susan Gamble from Post Media is reporting that an Ontario judge has, quote, strongly denounced as unacceptable and intolerable the conduct of Norfolk OPP in a case involving a young black man, unquote. The man is Castle J. Chase. 21 years old. He was arrested and tasered by Norfolk police in Delhi, which is in southwestern Ontario. He was charged with, my God, get this, two counts of, quote, prowling at night, unquote, and then charges related to his arrest, obstructing police, escaping custody, assaulting a police officer, causing bodily harm, and failing to comply. People called police when they saw Chase walking around downtown Delhi without shoes on. Police stopped him, and Chase refused to say his name. He ran away, and four cops ran after him. Acting Sergeant Richard Fody tased Chase, which knocked him to the ground. When he started moving again, Fody tasered him once more. The judge ruled that Fody's decision to attack Chase was the result of straight-up racism. After being held overnight without access to a lawyer, Chase punched an officer in the face, which was caught on camera. The judge dismissed all charges against Chase and stayed the assault charge due to numerous human rights violations that Chase had experienced. This isn't the first time that Justice Aubrey Hillard condemned the Norfolk OPP for a dereliction of duty within the force. In 2019, she condemned the force for how they treated an Oshwikan man who waited 16 months to be charged with a crime. Chase has made a complaint against the Norfolk OPP to the Ontario Provincial Police Oversight Body, the OIPRD. In 2022, Fadi made $112,000 as a police officer. Now to Sudan. 
where the UN estimates that 200,000 people have fled to neighboring countries since April. Battles occurring in Khartoum, Bahri, Omdurman, and the Darfur region are pushing people to seek safety in neighboring countries and in cities in Sudan that are safe. For the many people who have escaped to the port of Sudan, despite their relative safety from fighting, they are now contending with food, water, and shelter shortages, reports Democracy Now. There is also a wave of extreme heat. The influx of people into Port Sudan is also causing tension with people who live there who are already struggling to have access to food, water, and shelter amid the heat. The death toll is estimated to be at 600 people, though that is likely very low. Shadin Gardoud, a prominent singer, was killed in crossfire in Omdurman last week. Now to Somalia. African News and AP are reporting that thousands of families have been displaced due to flooding. As many as 219,000 people have been displaced, and more than 460,000 people have been affected by the flooding. Flooding has forced administrative offices and hospitals in the town of Beldwin to close. At least 22 people have died. The flooding comes at a very bad time. The region is already dealing with extreme weather. It just had a prolonged drought, which forced millions of people to rely on food aid programs to survive. And finally, I wanted to make a note in a story that I've mentioned before and that I've seen completely fall out of Western news headlines. The death toll for that Kenyan death cult has risen again. It now sits at 201 people, including children. 26 people have been arrested many charged with forcing people to respect their fast and refusing to allow them to escape from the area they resided in the Shakahola Forest. While autopsies on some of the recovered bodies show that they died from starvation, others died as a result of being beaten or suffocated. President William Ruto has voted to tackle the issue of extremist religions and will set up a task force to review the legal and regulatory frameworks that govern religious organizations in Kenya. Those are your headlines for Wednesday, May 17th. I'm Nora. Don't forget, share the podcast, subscribe if you don't already, tell your friends about it. I think everyone needs to listen to the daily news. It's pretty good. I hope you have a wonderful midday of the week.